Here we go. Hello. Hi. Well, I am with my delightful counselor today, and I want to record this session um, for various reasons that I'm not all totally clear about, but um, I had a very good sense that I wanted to record this material. So I'm just going to start. I've got four sections to the material. Um, I'll just start um, with, I am aging. And in my aging, I am coming to coalesce multiple intelligences and amazing amounts of experience and knowledges. And instead of convalescing in age, I am coalescing in age. <laughs> oh yeah, tell the joke first. <laughs> All right, so something happened way back. These are all related to my second section. Um, it's related to going back into the early 1990s when I had started the In Search of Fearlessness project and that community and center we had. And from that, one of the projects, sub-projects that arose was something called the 24-hour Sacred Warrior Journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a group of people in the school that I had begun. It was called the School of Sacred Warriorship, uh, 1993, and just a handful of us. And I had somehow amazingly convinced people that there was something here worth taking a program on for a year or plus. Uh, we met um, three mornings a week at five in the morning and processed until eight or nine, and they would go off to work. This was the 90s, uh, the good old days, as I call it, when people actually did stuff like that. Um, there was no big money exchange. It was part of people wanted to change and grow. And they took an opportunity. There was someone like me who could facilitate and was crazy enough to put out this idea. One of the initiation parts to the program, after reading and studying and group processes, which we had, um, was to do at least two sacred warrior journeys, 24 hour journeys, we called them. And you were to find someone who was willing to be for 24 hours with you and a partner, another sacred warrior in training. I often went with one of the protégés and we would go to their client who they had found, or we sometimes even advertised in the newspaper, the local city newspaper. And we actually got some clients through that in the classified ads. This was just like the 1990s. What was going on is so different than today, 30 years later. That's all I can say. What we did on these journeys was we just showed up as two sacred warriors. And uh, the person, we gave them a little intro to that. And we basically said, you have 24 hours. We are here to attend to you for 24 hours. We will sleep overnight at your place. You just provide us with a pillow and a mattress. You provide us with a little bit of food and nutrition, and the rest is a gift. If you feel like you want to gift us after this session, that's up to you. But that can come in any form up to you. And uh, we did these 24-hour journeys, and they were just amazing on many levels. Amazing. Why is that important to me today? I just want to declare it. I want it recorded archivally. That actually happened. Um, I was lucky enough to initiate that and have the vision for it and actually did it on many occasions. I, I know I had at least 16 clients that I had worked with over the years. Um, some others didn't do as many as that, but I had done those many. And I also participated as a client um, with two sacred warriors and did a 24 hour session. Well, what, the point of that is, is that if we took one day, so here's my benign counselor, recovered human being attitude. If we took one day that is our most important day in our life, and we actually lived it, that's the symbolic nature of the 24 hour, is that you as a client, one day out of your life and you said i want two sacred warriors with me for an entire day that's a pretty important day 
No. Yeah. Whether those people remember that day or not, I do not have the data for that. But what it is leading to, which will be my fourth part of the session today, is you'll hear uh, it's about my most important day. Mm. So the third component is I recently, and sharing with you, dear counselor, I shared uh, counsel on me coming up with my goal C. Mm. There's in goal making, uh, there was a model I was sharing with you that has an A model of goal making and B model. And then I said, I think there's a C model. And I, you know, it's an extension of the B that this person had come up with in this book. And my goal, aim, I'll see if I can just repeat it here, is, is the next step all linked with what I've just shared. My goal in life, my profession, my living, my vocation, is to have someone say to their employee or colleague, call this guy. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy. Mm -hmm. And the next part was, I want him on our team. And the reason that's a C goal is because I don't know how to attain that goal. And that makes it a very compelling goal. Um, an endless compelling goal and aim in life. And I still want that. Mm -hmm. So in some way, if I ever get that call because of that actually happened, I'll probably have a pretty important day in my life. Yeah. So the last part of the session is on an idea I had just this morning while having breakfast and I was so excited to share with my counselor here and you all. I have a notion that what people are not offered, I think all people, mm -hmm. they are not offered the opportunity and choicing and support for this direction. And the direction is a guide that will take people into and against their and contradicting distress patterns of the society, their own internalized distress patterns, and reaching toward some higher truth, reality, healing, and liberation. So my idea is that people are not being offered this right now, could be, by your choice, the most important day of your life. Mm -hmm. So we'll just allow connecting all the dots of what I've just already shared in my journey. So I'm thinking of particularly one person in my life that was on my mind this morning who's a very together, ordinary person. Like they function, they're related to me as in-law and so on. And I, and I think about this person and I think they're just repeating their life day after day after day, after day. They're retired, they have everything they need, et cetera, partnership. Their children, growing up. And they go golfing and all the things they do, day after day after day. And I know that person has not been asked, do you want to have the most important of your day of your life today. I will be there to be with you to have that day. Or I will at least start it for you. Let's start right now. So all you have to do is say yes. So my job is as a human being is to ask people, do you want to have the most important day of your day, your life today? <laughs> now we might ask that a little bit when it's their birthday. It is the one day that we take the time to think how important 
our birth was. And we would say, naturally, that is the most important day of your life. But of course, the really most important was the day of conception. But what seems to have happened to the human being in general is we have had a huge amnesia to not remember the most important day of our life other than the standard birthday, which you're allowed. It's like that's what oppression allows you. An oppressive society allows you to have that one day that's the most important day of your life. Now, we might also say, well, yeah, the day I won the lottery ticket or the day I got married or the day I had my first child, we may have, or, you know, I got my first bonus or whatever, right? People have, but I would ask you, is it now, now, living now? See, this is like to my in-law, to phone them up and say, now, right now, do you want to have the most important day of your life? What a contradiction to oppression and living in an oppressive society that we've accepted. And we do the same things. We repeat, we repeat, we repeat. We're in the block. We're in the box. We're in the matrix. And this, to me, is, is horrible. I'm not worried about this dude, this guy. He's got everything. And he's not even complaining. But I know enough because I know the other partner in that in-law who I also talk to. And I know the incompleteness of it. But I'll live with that incompleteness because it's comfortable. It's working. How many other human beings are living lives that are working but have not been freed by the asking of another human being asking, do you want to have the most important day of your life right now today? September the 8th, which is today, I, you, if we ask, and better if somebody asks us with the willingness to be supportive of you working through, that most important day in your life right now so that you will remember September 8th as the most important day of your life. And that is a birth of a different order. That's not the material birth. That is like a sacred birth of the being. And I'm so glad I could think of this thought today because I think about this individual, but only because they're so like so many individuals who just do not have the ask, do not have the present. And if I was to ask them, they would freak out. They would be so scared. Please listen to that. Why would you be so scared as a human being if somebody says, do you really want to have the most important day of your life today? Say yes, and I will be there. Say, I may not be there with you for the whole day. I don't need to be. I need to be with you there long enough, if you say yes, to facilitate you working through, sitting into that, I am making this the most important day of my life? Question mark for them. For me, it's not a question mark. This is the 100% benign knowing truth that I know you as a human being want to. <laughs> have the most important day of your life right now today, September 8th, or whatever the day is, right? You, you just can see, it's like, it's okay if you have doubts about that. See, it's okay if you share that with me, or is this a, is this a fake, or is this a, you know, a scam, or how much money, what are you getting out of it? 
So just imagine all of us co-counselors in practice, if we got ourselves to the place of that confidence of offering that gift to anyone at any time we chose to. And of course we have to offer it to ourselves. So one of the reasons I'm recording this is to remind me of exactly what I've said today. And it will be the most important day of my life today. Because I've actually committed to this notion, this idea, this possibility. Talk about a revolution. Talk about a movement. Talk about liberation. We use those words so loosely and so habitually often based on old imaginaries about what that means. And I'm saying at a basic, simple level, that's it. Do you want this life to be the most important day of your life this day? And of course it is. Do you want this life to be the most important life that you've ever lived? You know, it's like it has this two plays. I'm noticing I'm exchanging life with day. Oh my goodness, folks. And this isn't even about a religion. This is not about, you know, the second coming. But it is, a, in a way, about a second birth. And some people have had second births. Some people are on their third and fourth births. I'm probably on my third or fourth birth, which I would call a major transformation in my life. And this is just another one to actually align what I just confirmed in my own memory of my own history my autobiography that there are at least these sort of four quick steps that i could jot down and it leads to this day september 8th as the most important day of my life and yeah i could not do this just within myself you see it, it's interesting that i had to come to what i've just understood and shared through thinking about another mm. And this is this basic notion of a psychology based on helping that is intuitive and instinctual and is real of our inherent nature. Our inherent nature is not just needs-based. Mm -hmm. What can I get? Mm -hmm. No. It's an emergence of the gift, right? The abundance, the gift of life from our mother, from the, the birth. From, that's why we celebrate our birthdays, I would argue, is because we were helped. Mm -hmm. It's a memory of the ultimate help given to the birth so that we now have an existence. And we were given that in the womb. Mm -hmm. Oh, a home. Free home, no rent. <laughs> Not bad for an egg and a sperm coming together. I mean, come on, people. Maybe the warmest, coziest home we've ever had. <laughs> it's the best. And then it's a struggle. But the struggle then is to come to realize is that that is the natural part of me. So my natural helper, and this is the new psychology I, I'm really thinking about more and more beyond a needs-based psychology, it's not excluding it. There's a needs based to psychology, but that that is not the foundation. Uh, that's a huge skewing, and there's a lot of reasons for that skewing. It fits an oppressive society really well. Anyway, that's where I was going with this session. Um, I'll leave it open for some feedback from you, um, co counselor, but uh, I think that's all I want to say at the moment. Um, I am, again, to commit myself that to memory is September 8th, 2024, in this particular session, which I've now recorded and can put in my photo album, is <laughs> the favorite, most important day of my life. <laughs> okay, over to you. So I just, I have some questions. Just, I want to hear you talk more. I want to hear you talk more. And so what I'm wondering is, if one claims September 8th as the most important day, Could September 9th also be? And September, I mean. Yeah. 
And that's a good, nice, I, th I think what becomes interesting, it's all symbolic. Everything that we put in categories, September, the da da da, just like our birthday is that. And that. They're all symbolic. It's not of the actual experiential realm. It's a, a sub symbolic realm that tries to make a container for what we're actually experiencing. So this is a knowing that is just completely experiential, which means it's transferable across all symbols, all categories, at any moment in time. But, but the challenge is put a container on it. Because if you don't, it can kind of go goosey loosey and maybe I'll remember, maybe I won't. And I think that's what's so remarkable about the day of birth. It actually does happen on that day, on that moment, that hour, you were weighing that much. Your temperature was that. You see, there is a value to that signification. That is beyond <laughs> benign reality. That it is. is. And no it's just, you know, it in a sense is just archival. But now you have to live, live it. So in a way, what I've shared today is the living expression, as best I could put it in words today in 2024 at the age of 72 in a bit, at nine months for gestation. I am only saying what I knew when I was conceived. Nothing different, nothing extra, nothing special, nothing super. It is actually the words of the zygote fertilized, mm -hmm. attaching to the uterus. My gosh, you just hooked up with your mom, right? Not just an egg. No, you actually now are attached. And guess what? You're growing on that side and she's growing on that side. That's mm -hmm. what the uterus, the womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mutual growing. And that's all I'm doing. If I offer somebody, do you want to make this the best day of your life? By asking the question. I'm just saying, do you want to hook up to the uterus again? Mm. Hmm. rather than be that separate individual. You have to figure out your goals. You have, no, no, no. It's like we need the offering. We need the offering of both. The nurturing. It is ultimately the nurturing of, and that's why I would hold witness to, right? If I offered this to, let's say, my in-law, I would then hold witness. That's all it means. I'm holding witness to you saying yes which is no different than you saying yes when you go down the tube and you're coming to the the wall of the uterus and you're going, do I want to hook up or not? And at any point in time, people choose, the biological system chooses not to hook up. And that's called an abortion. Natural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, once you sort of really understand and get the hookup, it's just it's just a mutual coming and you say yes. So that's what I can witness for another human being so that at least they have the opportunity to say, this was the most important day of my life. And then you go, well, why? Because I had the opportunity to think about what it would mean if this was the most important day of my life. Well, that changes your life, folks. Yes. To have yes. one day of that will change your life. I can't tell you how, but everything tells me it will. Just like as I chose in my egg and sperm, yes, to hook up with the wall of the uterus and become part of the placenta. It's a choice. At some it's, level. A, it's a choice. And it's a, in that, as that is that zygote, you know, it's like, yes, I'm going to do it or not today, maybe next month. 
Yeah. Or I'm ambivalent about it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> See, all the feelings are fine. You know, is life really worth being here? Well, sometimes it's like the crap. It's a bad deal. We're not all in privilege and we're not all in pleasure and joy and excitement. We're, there's stuff, really cruel, ugly stuff going on. Yeah. And yet, you see, yet, the benign reality, which is the contradiction to all that distress. That's why RC is such a good theory. It says, but just, and you know, every religion has this. That isn't all there is. It's just another way to say it. And then the question is, well, but what is other? Is that good? And I'm just saying, let's go for it. Let's talk about it. How do you want this to be the best day of your life? We'll talk about that. I'll listen to you. Work through what it is that will make this the best day of your life. Can you imagine anyone coming up to you? An adult coming up to a child and say, do you want this to be the best day of your life? And then being willing to spend the time with them to help them work through what that would be. Mm -hmm. And you listen and they may say, oh yeah, to go get an ice cream. And you say, okay, but what if we get the ice cream and then I'm going to ask you again. But what would make this the most important day? See, you don't let up. You don't let up on a superficial response. And that's key part to this intervention I'm suggesting is actually now available as of today, September 8th, 2024. We actually now have some knowledge and information, whether you like it or not, whether you think Michael is brilliant or not, regardless, you have some information to choose from that wasn't here yesterday. Yep. Yep. That's the intervention. That's the, to me, the co-counseling. In a way, I'm co-counseling myself, being a counselor for myself, and being that with you as witness, and those who watch this video as witness, a uh, bonus. Thanks very much for this today. Oh. Anything else you want to say, that's fine, but I'm finished. <laughs> well, it's in, in some ways, it's a little, I mean, because I'm taking it in personally, right? And so okay. it's a little bit, it's too too bad almost that my session wasn't uh, taped as well, because probably the antidote to my session, which was talking about feeling a flatness and a yeah like is this all there is what is this my life right um the antidote perhaps is exactly what you've been talking about and of course i had no idea what you were going to show up with today but literally 15 minutes before we were on i was coming up with this thought mm. and process and i wanted to record it mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that piece about your own background there yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. for today. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that might be the antidote for lots and lots of, uh, emotions people are feeling as reality. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Are recording you... here and I'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs>